It's okay now. Okay, cool. Uh, Diane Mueller. Diane Mueller. Right Our next presentation is uh, by Diane Muller, and it's about PAS. All right. Well, I'm going to talk about putting the PAS in OpenStack. Um, I am from Red Hat, obviously, and I am the OpenShift Origin Community Manager. So I am going to ask all of you to contribute and commit to my project soon, so don't worry. I'll ask you to volunteer at the end. So um, this presentation is, comes out of a cross-community collaboration between um, the OpenShift open source project and the OpenStack open source project and the team um, that is working on Heat, which is OpenStack's orchestration um, layer. And so this is, this is how I managed to coerce people into helping me get a pause into OpenStack through the back door. So I'm, today I'm going to talk a little bit about what pause is and OpenShift, a little bit about the underlying architecture so you understand what it is that we're actually deploying in OpenStack. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about how to deploy OpenShift on OpenStack. I'm not going to demo it because I'm not crazy and I only have 15 minutes. And then I'm going to teach you all how to go to GitHub and find more information. Um, and Origin is just one of hundreds of thousands of projects that Red Hat um, has been sponsoring and, has, and putting resources on. And um, I'm really pleased that they've um, put so much energy into this. There's a huge style a stack of projects that are there be behind Fedora, um, JBoss, Overt, Gluster, RDO, and Origin. We have a really solid cloud um, offering at Red Hat and, at, and also a companion open source option for each one of them. So um, the origin project that I work on upstream feeds um, up OpenShift online. So if you go to openshift.com, you'll see a public pause that is using the code base that we're working on as origin. And then, of course, there is an enterprise version of it that you can sell, um, that Red Hat can sell and make money off of so they can pay for me to fly over here and come to FOS them. So um, why I love PAS or Platform as a Service or however you want to pronounce that acronym, is because it's magic. I've been a developer for almost 25 years now, and um, I got booted into product management and research and development because I slowly got um, bored with how complicated everything got, because application development in, with the rise of the internet got a lot more complicated than just writing wonderful, beautiful code and wonderful, beautiful algorithms. I, I had to learn how to uh, instantiate Apache servers. I had to figure out um, how to stand up a database, do my DNS stuff. And, you know, frankly, I just liked code and I didn't want to do all that. And so when Paws came along about three years ago, um, between the automation that Paws gives me, I got to wipe out the whole old school way that I had learned about um, working within enterprise and organizations about building applications and getting them out there. You know, I could just go from having an idea and then going through all that bureaucratic stuff to get the resources to test, deploy, scale. All the craziness um, got scoped down to a swipe of a credit card on whether it was Heroku or Engine Yard or Google App Engine or wherever I was using the services going through the back door. So, you know, it, it solved the problem for a lot of unhappy developers like myself. You know, the cloud really came along and made this, um, this resource available to me again, um, and Platform as a Service really did a, a big piece of that. Um, all these public pauses, though, kind of gave this, us developers um, the expectation that we were going to get service self-service on-demand services, um, that we wouldn't have that wait time anymore and we'd be able to get all of this stuff um, really, really fast. And what happened was, you know, we started launching applications through the back door and kind of scaring um, uh, the IT crowd um, because we, there was the, no risk management. There was no um, way to keep those barriers from going on. So what Origin is, it is the um, source code, everything you need to deploy your own private pause. So you don't have to use OpenShift.com. You can take and go to, if you go to install.openshift.com, you can, with one um, command line, install your own platform as a service on pretty much anything. Because what I found was cloud computing, just OpenStack, wasn't enough. Because infrastructure gave me the, um, the, the resources, the stack, the servers, and all this, and made it all elastic and nice. But I still was on the hook to configure all the LAMP stack and all the databases and do my DNS stuff. and I. I wasn't really into that. 
Um, and software as a service is just completely boring to me as a, um, a developer. I don't want to use somebody else's stuff. I want to develop my own algorithms, my own web interfaces. Um, so that wasn't really cool. But platform as a service really started to deliver because it automated the whole application runtime environment for me and started doing all that work for me. So it, not only did it deploy the application, but it managed it too. So if I had to apply patches or version Python, or because my Twitter handle is Python DJ, um, I'm a Python Django freak of a bit, and um, I, you know, there's new versions of Python coming out all, all the time, and I didn't want to be the one responsible for upgrading my um, my gears and my services. So. Uh, I really fell in love with this. And all of this here, and this is, I told you I wouldn't show you too many things, but GitHub um, is the one, most wonderful thing that ever was invented. On openshift.github.io, you can find all of the source code for doing this and the instructions on how to do that, how to deploy your own. Um, if you just want to test it out and try it, you can go to openshift.com. Um, the thing that makes us really different is we have the RHEL platform support, but you might have heard we um, just... Uh, announced support for CentOS. We've been running on Fedora 19, so we really have um, a pretty cool depth and breadth to our Linux offerings. It's an extensible architecture, and by that I mean I can write the cartridges and extend the platform with new languages if I want Erlang or Scala. There's a do-it-yourself cartridge methodology that can, allows me to instantiate um, the language and the frameworks that I want. Um, it's a really easy way to get your apps noticed. Sorry, what's cartridge? Sorry. Two seconds and I'll get there. So basically, it gets everybody there very fast. It runs on any infrastructure. It doesn't um, necessarily have to run on a cloud. It can run on a um, bare metal. Key terms. You asked the right question. I just got it out of order. Um, the broker is the thing that's monitoring and managing all of the what we call nodes, um, which are groups of gears. And your application runs within the, no it, within the gear. Um, and the cartridge is the um, technology or the framework package that gets pushed into that gear. So if you think about the broker, it's basically managing the state, the DNS, figuring out all the authentication, and monitoring the health of all the nodes that are under it. So these are key pieces because when you're spinning this up on um, OpenStack, you're going to be able to create images, one for a broker and one uh, uh, clone, clonable one for nodes. So um, that's why we're talking about them, this. And if you want more information, you can go to openshift.github.io, and it's all documented there. I'm trying to talk ridiculously fast. So if you wanted to deploy this on, um, on anything else, you would go to install.openshift.com. But deploying it with um, OpenStack, um, on OpenStack with heat is something slightly different. You're going to go to the OpenStack heat templates. You notice that is actually in OpenStack, it's not in OpenShift's GitHub repo. So what we did was work really closely with the uh, folks in the Heat group um, to make sure that the, some of the sam sample templates that they started working with right off the bat were OpenShift ones. Because when you have a complex application like the broker with multiple nodes, you need to be able to manage spinning them up, monitoring them, um, watch for alarms and triggers when you run out of disk space um, uh, and you need to make more room. So it, they were actually very good um, use cases for heat. And so we, we had the opportunity to work with the heat community to make that uh, possible. And as a result, the, um, right now the enterprise template files are all there for um, deploying on OpenShift, for managing it, and for auto-scaling it, as well as um, for Fedora um, it says make room for Fedora 19. The Fedora 18 ones are there now. Um, the CentOS ones will be there, I think, at the end of the week. So if you wanted to try heat um, with CentOS, and we'll see when the Fedora 20 ones actually get there. So a little bit about heat. Um, heat was, it's, it's been around for a little while in terms of the length of that, since November 13th. It's a very active code base. It's constantly being worked on. There's a lot of contributors, not just from Red Hat, but from lots of other projects because this orchestration um, layer is pretty good and it touches across um, lots of other functionalities within OpenStack um, and it really provides all of the capabilities we need to do the auto-scaling of applications. And so, as I said, the templates are ready there. So the way that it works is it models itself um, originally at, o over the uh, AWS CloudFormation API, and it um, basically abstracts 
all of the stuff, the Nova, the Glance, the Swift, the Quantum, and Cinder, um, away from the templating mechanism. And it allows us to um, use it to do HA, um, auto scaling, and all of the monitoring. We use um, Solometer for monitoring this, um, for monitoring OpenShift's pause um, running on OpenStack. And it is actually an accepted um, open, OpenStack integrated product project. So the, the steps that you have to do um, for, uh, for running this is there's another uh, project called Disk Image Builder. Five minutes. All right. I'm not going to run my um, movie of the demo, so all right. So the Disk Image Builder um, creates the image for the broker. You have to do that. You have to instantiate an image. Um, and then you have to instantiate a, 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 a node image. And then you t use that, well, I shouldn't say create, it should say, then you run the heat templates that are in that GitHub repository um, to, to do some of the work. And then you have to register the images with, with Glance. And then you start the actual um, heat templates. So, I have five minutes, that was pretty good. I'm talking really fast. Um, the reason I, I wanted to do this lightning talk is because these are um, very early days for heat. Um, we put a lot of work into the OpenShift um, examples, and we want more people to test them on different configurations of OpenStack um, and different flavors. We've tested them on um, ROS and RDO, Red Hat's two distributions. Um, we'd like other people to test them on other um, versions uh, and distributions of OpenStack. We're working across communities to do that. So all of the repos um, are um, GitHub, OpenStack, Heat. We'll give you the Heat stuff. Um, the Heat templates are there. All of the GitHub repos for OpenShift is, are, are there as well. The Heat documentation, you should read it. Um, the, there is a longer blog about all of this that we've got up on openshift.com slash community slash blogs. If you just Google for Heat and OpenShift, um, you'll find it. And there's a 12-minute, very good step-by-step -step video that I would have showed you in hyperspeed, but um, we don't have enough time for that today. Um, and any of you that want to learn Heat, one of the best ways you can do it is to take, open up um, the heat templates for origin and take a look through it because it does, it has all uh, good examples of um, setting triggers, using monitoring, and doing the auto scaling. And so it's a great place to begin to play with heat and um, not get burned. So with that, I think I hit my end. Three minutes. Any questions? <coughs> Speed, stunned. There's one way up there. Solometer. See, Solometer is the monitoring tool from OpenStack. It's not a product, it is an OpenStack project. And it's a great way. What's the roadmap for the integration with Docker? Ah, the road. See, I took that slide out because I thought I wouldn't have enough time. So the question is what is the roadmap for integration with Docker? Well, um, sort of like embedded troops. We have two members of the OpenShift engineering team who are embedded in the Docker team now and working on it. And with the release of RHEL 7, the, f the features that we needed, because we use SE Linux to, con to secure our, our gears, are now in there. So I think in the next one or two releases, we should see the Docker integration show up, at least in a, a beta testable way. And it's, it, we're really actively involved in the Docker project, as probably everybody knows. And um, we're looking forward to that, um, that day, too. So the gears that we talked about, in, in some ways, are the same thing as what a Docker container is. And so there'll be some, some morphing of the language that I get to use in these presentations. Any other questions? Thank you, Fosdem. Oh, what? So with Docker uh, integration in mind, and the uh, role of Docker with supporting different backends or software as well as other systems you have, like, so you can run your application on a service machine, so you can use the integration integration, stuff like that, by using the Docker as well? I don't know. I don't know the answer to that. Can you repeat that? Uh, it was a question about whether if we integrate Docker, we'll be able to run on Solaris? Is that? On that, I don't know the answer to. I, I'll have to think about that one. I ha yeah, probably will, but I don't know. So, so thank you, FOSDEM. This is my absolute first FOSDEM ever, and um, it has been a complete blast. You guys are wonderful, and the beer is great, and I think we're heading off to the beer temple now um, and to do some praying to the beer god. So hope to see you all, and I'm rooting for the Seattle Seahawks tonight in the Super Bowl at the big game place, and so if you're not a Seahawks fan, forget about it. All right, thank you.
Thank you. Thank you very much. It's, it's oh, getting I, even better. Oh, I can't do that. Does anyone want chocolate? I can't do chocolate. Okay. Thanks.